cracking down on illegal goat fights. That's why they do it under the table. Green leaves, <laughs> sure, all right. Green leaves are going to be rolling out here again on triple GPS with the wrecking ball. We're step now starting on the Winston, so they are respecting the fact that, okay, we've seen DPS out of Green Leaves. We know they are likely to bring this out on attack. We should be starting out of Winston because if we start on Orion, we're going to be caught with our pads down. So Jupiter. You know, to be careful with how they choose to approach this, Green Leaves should be able to open up a lot of space. And they're so careful that they have to already be hiding. You can see the flank as well. Shinaira on the other side looking to sort of get players out of position. Ooh, speaking of, where Steph ends up eating some chunks. Not so much because he's out of position, just good target selection there by Green Leaves, keeping the pressure they on can't. these tanks. And where Steph's taking a long time to get healed. It's going to take even longer now with Claire dead. Good counter trade though. Take the forward pressure of the tank off the ground. But now with Savagod dead, all this damage is going to stick to Jupiter. And with the spam composition for Green Leaves, it feels like it's only a matter of time here. Yeah, certainly. And Green Leaves nearly have ultimates as well, just in case it's not enough. And for Jupiter, still waiting for more members. Just about two ticks about to go away from them as they regroup and they will have one chance to recontest the point if they even want to. They do at least have that respawn. They do get the healers back in. You have that slightly closer spawn, but there are those ultimates. Oh! That was a little bit spicy, but does not quite get the massive cut off that they were looking for. The Sonic Arrow finding the mech for Mahororo was a bit wild, but there we go. EMP going to be committed out. Rocket Barrage for good measure, and that's going to be the point capped over. And with Green Leaves very much on the front foot here, Jupiter still recovering in terms of respawns. This could be a lot of free ground. And you're probably thinking, okay, Green Leaves look like they overcommitted there. That was like three ultimates. Why did they do that? They'd probably be looking to swap fairly soon. After they roll through, maybe get a bit of a snowball going, see if they can progress with some of these members. They'll probably be switching to their own 3-3. The loss of ultimates at that stage, not as big of a deal. But Green Leaves need to get value right now. They need to get a lot of card distance before they make that swap. Or they could actually just make that swap early to start the next batch of ultimates rolling in. This is quite an interesting situation, all things considered. We'll have to see how much ground Green Leaves end up getting, because Jupiter, because they've stayed on the same comp, will be able to move into some ultimates here. If they play this right, they should, in theory, be able to anchor a good defense. And now this is where if Green Leaves actually lose here, which they do have a member caught out. Ooh, already... Super fast trade. Yeah, finds Hengi. I mean, it's not even a trade now because they weren't even able to finish off 10. That's absolutely disgusting. As Hengi was trying to follow up on his grab. And now Westep is taking all of the damage that Green Leaves can bring to bear. With that Primal Rage running, oh. he still gets taken super low. Self-destruct from Ken Mohororo is going to try and dislodge these two airborne members in Hoshimi and Zerafi, and it gets one of them. With that, they're finally able to make some headway in this fight here. Hoshimi gets a kill and might even want a rocket barrage before he goes down. At this point, Green Leaves are in a catch-22 because they've committed to this comp. They had their better ultimates coming up, but they have also just lost this fight. Okay, so now it does kind of look like 2020 hindsight. You look, go back at A, possibly now a serious uh, sort of overcommitment of ultimates. They've built most of them back up, but they have lost a fight as well. Despite 10 really outplaying Hengi in the middle there, Ooh. Green Leaves need to make sure these next special ultimates are good, and 50 needs to get out of trouble. That was a critical detect there. Otherwise, 50 had a brilliant uh, spot for his EMP. Still gets a decent one, to be honest, and there is still no answer for it on Jupiter. So once again, Green Leaves having banked these ultimates up can just throw them into the mix. They should be able to cap off the back of this, and then this is probably a good time to also change the composition for point C. See what Anakin can do with the nano boost. Likely not a lot though. Runs into a mine even. Yikes. So Green Leaves now more than surely going to be able to take this with a few more casualties on the side of Jupiter. Couple more staggers, which are important because both teams are in a position where they'll be looking for a few swaps. You can see all the Green Leaves members going towards their spawn, making those swaps now. Even Xerophy willing to give up the Valkyrie. And part of why they can do that is they know Jupiter need to make some changes too. So they don't actually end up too far behind on tempo anyway. Plus, Nano Boost can really help charge up other tank ults. Because both teams have to reset together, now they both get to fight together at the same point. Very aggressive by Jupiter early. Oh, brilliant. I love the push in there by Sonairo. Charge on West Step isn't going to... Oh, it does secure a kill in the end, but yeah. Really is getting drilled back on this one. That is a very critical fight once again for Jupiter. Oh, Scenario throws out a shatter. They might just turn this back killed? around. They just all come out of the woodwork to barrel forward. Scenario wants to put the team on his back here. Found where Steph gets the shatter after the fact as well. And even in losing him, they still get a little bit of extra distance on the card before they have to properly back out. And I think for Green Leaves, okay, that's not really the most disciplined play for them. They stick around, they throw in the shatter, they 
trying to get a bit more distance. Sure, you give that one over to them, but ultimately still lose this fight and are not able to really capitalize on all the great moves they made. Cloud got, what, a five-man Bionade, but not enough members to really take advantage. Scenario lands a nice shadow, really big shadow, gets two kills himself, really, but again, not enough to really take that and run with it, win that fight. Bit of an interesting situation now for Jupiter because off the back of that, they have been able to kind of kickstart the ult economy, but 50 ZMP, they find Savagod with it, then Jupiter could just get completely flattened here. Savagod's proximity is a little bit too close to his own team right now. He's got to be careful because EMP more oh. timing. Super quick on that one. We're stepping to Bionade, so keeping him alive until that ends is going to be critical. Ken Mahororo able to reset the mech here as well. Hengi's grab. Oh, they haven't been able to follow up on it, and unfortunately, Ten got more value out of his. So Jupiter still on the back foot. Nice Bionade shadow. They can't follow up on it too easily. So Nairo, the only casualty. Green Leaves. They've used everything that they have available, but they are still ahead in this fight. And Jupiter aren't exactly coming up on ultimates themselves until clear sound barrier is available. And for most of the fight, the card has actually been moving forward. So despite it now kind of looking like it might end one way or another, the card is nearly at the final position. Hinky's going to rescue the fight with a nice kill, and Jupiter just struggling to hold on. It's been a couple of grabs now in a row, but Hengi, for one reason or another, whether it's his fault or not, that the team, Jupiter, has not been able to capitalize and use that to actually win. That was brilliant from Green Leaves there as well. They didn't back out because they lost the fight. They actually won it. They backed out because they recognized that they would lose the fight if they kept in on it. So they wait for a second go around, knowing that they have the time and the ultimates. Just a nice bit of discipline after what we've seen so far in this map. And if they keep this up, if they get in the land the shadow as well, they should be at the cap at a nice time. Oh, bumping up West Step first, and then they land the shadow down. They haven't quite got the follow up too quickly. Jupiter, double support ultimates though, which means MP 50 coming. It's going to be able to get a sick EMP. He here doesn't even matter that he doesn't catch Sabah God. Four members is more than enough. Unfortunately, Hengi's the first to go down, and then Sabah God. So it's all the non hacked members that die, but it is still a numbers advantage in the fight. Only West Step with an ultimate now. He's done. Mahororo is low. Shadow finally comes down, but doesn't get any connection. And Ken Mahororo will only be resetting the mech. Won't even be doing that as he gets hacked out just before he loses the mech. And Dream Leaves gonna keep the foot on the gas pedal here. Keep killing the members as they come out of the spawn, and will roll across the finish line with just under a minute. Absolutely taking no chances there as well. Ten, once again, when he goes up against Hengi, whether it's Hanzo versus the Zari here, in this case, Zari for him versus the Doomfist, gonna pop the grab on him, make sure that he's not gonna be the hero for the team anymore. And you have a position where the Khan is already nearly at the finish line. You have lots of ultimates coming online for Green Leaves as they push it. Not a lot of ultimates available now for Jupiter anymore. Just working with West Step and that Earth Shatter. Earth Shatter goes into a shield, doesn't hit anybody. Green Leaves in, have 50 with that EMP, catches four members. They get two kills off of that one. Grav comes up next. They have a lot more in the bank, a lot more gas in the tank. Nice bit of discipline towards the end there as well. Again, a bit of a nice change up compared to the over commitments that we've seen on other points of the map. And for that, Green Leaves able to push through 47 seconds on the time bank. It's yeah. Not the greatest, but it's not the worst. And I'll tell you what, honestly, that entire time, it actually just felt like Jupiter was slowly but surely losing. There was no point where it felt like they were ahead or executing well enough to stop the cart. That cap felt like an inevitability from fight one with just a little bit of pushback. Jupiter are getting so little out of all of the ultimates they use, and it means that Green Leaves only need to get mileage out of one ultimate, and often that one ultimate's the EMP. It's a really tough situation for Jupiter to keep finding themselves in. And now on this defense here, Green Leaves starting to look like if this is going to be correct, which it should be with the 10 seconds is remaining, they are going to be playing They're triple DPS once more with the Wrecking Ball and Sonaira. Jupiter starting things out with a West Step on the Ryan, possibly expecting a bit of a GOATS 3-3 mirror, but once they see this composition, likely we'll see West Step go to win the game. Or it'll be the DPS's for Jupiter. That is how they chose to match it last time around. They've already uh, shouldn't spot it out before too long. They find Sonaira. It's just around this next corner. It'll be a nasty surprise for sure. You can be aware of that. Rockets do start flying in and that's the message to yep. get out. That's a long way they have to walk forward before they walk back. They're going to make the change up. First fight is probably going to no, happen. No, actually, they're choosing not to. They've decided they don't want to just waste a minute changing. They're going to commit to this anyway. That is a big bump up out from Sonairo. Oh, and a huge Bionic Grenade able to land on Amakin and West Step. This gives Jupiter a bit of pause. So they have to back off and recoup. But ultimately, a successful rotation because they lost no one. They have all six members. No one went down. A lot of damage came through. You do have to be wary of where those ultimates are going to come in from, especially from Machine. 
see me, but you do have 6v6, which is where you want to be. You're right about that Rocket Barrage, though, that being able to get charged up so quickly. Hack on West Step, and they go ahead and commit right in. Catch those members straight off the back end. Mahororo d as well, and there's nothing else Jupiter can do. So a good rotation, but that's all they get out of it. It doesn't result in an actual good fight, unfortunately, and Jupiter just end up losing a ton of time. So this is the problem with, okay, what is the ro what does the rotation actually mean for you? Get into the section of the map. That's fantastic for you, but versus any other matchup where, okay, it's maybe 3-3 three, three on the ground on the other side, you rotate into a high ground position, you drop on top of them, you find somewhere, if they're playing bunker, you rotate into the bunker. If you're going up against DPSs, the likes of a pharmacy and a Sombra with a tracer, where you rotating to, you're just swapping what your entry is on the point. That's the only thing that changes. And sadly for Jupiter, no matter where you enter with that composition, not going to be good. This is now just a really tough situation for Jupiter. Have to wait out the biotic grenade. Even with this Transcendence and potentially the Sound Barrier 2, Greenleaf's have the right tools to get a lot done in this fight. And the same problem exists. Okay, you have Winston, but where do you fight oh. guys? Oh, barely surviving that one. That's gnarly. So I've got to live on like, what, 10 HP there? Winston, Winston. Winston. not so lucky. Yeah, I was going to say. EMP is a bit of a freebie here. Savagon's still going to come in for the answer, but Green Eves don't mind at that point. This is still a numbers advantage. Should just be able to press in onto the point now. Should be able to... Actually, Valkyrie has now run out. It's going to be the minefield to go down. Rocket Barrage as well. Green Eves have committed a lot into this fight, actually. They end up throwing every ultimate they have, and once again, they will find themselves winning it, and it's not like Jupiter are charging up a lot of ultimates of their own. Really, aside from the EMP, Jupiter themselves actually burned more ultimates anyway. And I think that's got to be the biggest victory for Jupiter here, is to say we got most of the ultimates out of Green Leaves, minus the Pulse Bomb, which is going to be up most fights anyway. We now have something to use against Green Leaves in terms of our own EMP. However, the original problem still persists here. Where do you force the fight? Because Green Leaves are so tricky to lock down. They have so many members and so many positions. Honestly, for Hengi, he probably has to target the pharmacy. The EMP yeah. needs to catch both members, and then all of Jupiter need to dive on top of those two members. If you get both the pharmacy combo out of there, then the 6v4 can be winnable. Speaking of which, they're basically just playing dive at this point. Jupiter, I mean. The EMP comes out. Onto, Let's get them. Yeah, the pharmacy and the extra support, but not in position to actually follow up and get the damage. Part of that is Amakin being locked in a 1v1 with 10 means he's not there to actually finish off the grounded birds on the side of Green Leaves. And now Green Leaves repositioned to get to just push straight back in. Jupiter in Counter a lot big. more damage right now. Ken Mahororo's d make Amakin super low, barely scraping alive. And they will finish off 10 at last. But EMP plus Rock Barrage, Shoshimi has already got more than enough done in spite of going down. He'll probably just get raised back in anyway. And Jupiter, 10 seconds left. That's the thing, they don't even have members here. Look at who they have alive. Claire has to dive for the point. Abusio, in fact, has even live long enough. It's absolutely nuts, and even then he still doesn't with the help of the bio grenade from Cloud. Jupiter looking utterly lost throughout that entire offense, and Green Leaves just looked like the better team. They looked as helpless as Green Leaves looked attacking Temple of Anubis. I would even argue defending Temple of Anubis. What you can say about Numbani is, when you look at the other side though, when you actually have Jupiter defending instead, okay, uh, Green Leaves did make it to the end of the map, so... In some ways, based on how this map resulted, you can say that was expected. It's three points that they were able to get into the time bank and zero on the side of Jupiter, being that they didn't cap A at all. But we saw more of the map. We saw them have competitive defensive fights. We saw them for the majority of that and get for A, B, and C points. We saw it being a case where it nearly was a hold somewhere along the lines, but it wasn't really a winnable map. And in terms of what you said earlier, it didn't see, they, they looked like they were losing slowly, right? Yeah. And now, they just go to a full stop right at the end when it comes to their own attacking phase. I mean, uh, look, if we're playing on average here, now maybe the shoe is going to be back on the other foot in our next map, but if we're looking at the balance here between these two teams, honestly, Jupiter have looked way more lost overall in as much as when they're playing just, just basic composition. So they're playing just 3-3. Three, three. They should be at least good at 3-3, right? It's not like Greenleaf struggling at dive when, honestly, it's not like teams have really had to play a lot of dive for a long while, especially not the likes of Greenleaves. I don't even think this team existed when dive was, like, the, the center point of the meta, right? Well, they certainly weren't at this level yeah. when they existed. Jupiter should be far better at 3-3 than what is actually happening today. And I think that's the far more alarming thing because you're going to end up in way more situations where you have to play 3-3 out of the worst team than Greenleaves have to play 
die of something they're not good at and are suddenly then the worst team. So I think the argument for why they are struggling there is the fact that we go back to the, you know, the pre-match talk where you look at a team like Jupiter, you say they've shaken up their roster, they've had new members being added in of a different nationality, which is definitely going to make things a little bit more difficult in terms of teething issues. We're now seeing those teething issues really rear their ugly heads through and for them now up against teams sitting at match point two and one in the series with potentially only one map left to go. It's not looking pretty. And look, maybe we do go all the way to Nepal. Maybe we do go to the tiebreaker. But like at this point, I don't know how genuinely confident I am that Jupiter would even win that one. Green News did win our first control. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because, of course, before we go back to control, we do, of course, have to go through escort. And if you're unfamiliar, well, here's how it works. Welcome to Watchpoint Gibraltar. This is escort. Two teams face off as either defenders or attackers. <laughs> this is the payload. The attacking team has a limited amount of time to escort the payload along a set path containing three checkpoints. The payload only moves forward when an attacker stands near it. Defenders can delay the payload's movement by standing nearby at the same time. To get moving again, attackers must clear away the defenders by force. Every time the payload reaches a checkpoint, the attackers score one point and gain additional time on the clock. If even one attacker is near the payload when the clock runs out, the game enters overtime. This extends play indefinitely until the attackers are either cleared off the payload or they gain more time by reaching a checkpoint. The round ends when the payload reaches the destination or when time runs out. Teams switch sides each round. Whichever team scores the most points and escorts the payload farthest wins. And now we're going to a new map for the season and for Overwatch in general. It's actually going to be Havana here. So in terms of shakeups for both teams, again, it depends on your preparation for this map. There is a good chance for Jupiter, much like what we saw in Temple of Anubis, where you throw a spanner in the works, you throw something in there to confuse or really just put green leaves off, and then you'll have the possibility of repeating the result in the Temple of Nervous, pushing us to a map 5, which Jupiter sorely need. It's a bit of smooth bossa nova for you. Someone's going to at me telling me that it's not it's like, it's actually Caribbean swing jazz or something. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm just really actually, impressed at how good a pun Don Rombotico is. Actually, Don Rombotocardinus is the name. It's Don Rombotocardinus Jazz. He invented yes. it. As well as inventing a high-quality run. I do want to... Okay, so this is an interesting map with a couple of very interesting points. This first section, hey, super long. We're in the Caribbean. Open, pirate ship time. <laughs> and it is. And mostly you see the... the well, it's quote-unquote bunker here on the defense, but this is going to be an offensive version instead. A lot of early spam damage from Jupiter. Snipers Ooh. are quite nice here as well. Great angles to work with. I mean, tell you what, the spam damage is helping really keep a lid on 10, trying to get set up on the payload. 50 is going to have to take a raise. Finally, with the immortality field, they can get him on the payload and been able to open up a bit of damage on Jupiter. Jupiter, plus getting past this first street helps. Which is going to be the part that really wins for Green Leaves because despite Jupiter oh, kind of holding on on the defense, they are not getting any control over the objective itself and they are rapidly losing space. And that's the thing. Just playing calmly and cleanly as they slowly advance forward. Claire going down was massive as well. It means any kills and a lot of the damage. They got to contest. I mean, they got to, but even can they? The tanks are super low. Who's going to do it, right? It's not like they have a dragon strike to just toss out of the cart. How do you even approach 10 at this juncture? Amicon's already dead. Tank form picks up both the supports and absolutely crumbling on the defense is Jupiter. Really no contest. And I think in some ways, you look at Jupiter defending here, you're thinking, okay, can this be like Temple of Anubis? Well, the difference is on Temple, it is a solid static point. On this map, you have a rolling and moving objective, and as long as green leaves are not being contested directly, they are pushing that objective forward, and Jupiter are at a stage where Eventually, it's just going to be too late. The Bastion's in position. Bastion's now re-in position, already on the bridge, already on high ground. Jupiter swapping onto a 3-3 and in a lot of trouble, to be quite fair. I mean, we're in Havana, so I'd like to say close but no cigar for Jupiter, but the reality is they actually look miles behind. They, they look lost again. 
We'll see if they can recover because playing 3 3 into a bunker is what can be very good. Two things they kind of have to do here is one, they do have to start controlling the objective. So send somebody to deal with that and they look like they have. Finally, are able to do that. But honestly, between that, the damage boost there and the uh, whatever it's called, amplification matrix plus the dragon strike and the spam coming through from the uh, bastion. That's what he's called. I'm Even more damage things. boost. It's just, I mean, it's nasty, right? Like, that's a brilliant firing line. There's no way Jupiter can just approach Green Eve's head on while those yep. tools were available, and now they're not. And by the way, the defendable position for Jupiter has long passed now. Like, yes, they kind of slowed down the cart. They tried to engage on the bunker, who had a ton of ultimates. You still have ultimates, by the way. Finally, they get onto the cart, but at this point, it feels like Jupiter are the ones attacking because Greenleaf is the wrong place on the high ground. Yeah, self destruct has no hope of contesting these members. Most of them are already dead before this tank form even comes out, and it's just insult to injury at that juncture. Plus, the nano boost. Oh, sorry, it wasn't a nano boost, it was just extra damage. And 10 is putting on a clinic here. Wish they'd better be swapping because otherwise, that should not have been a shadow gear in Jupiter. This is, uh, oh, it looks like it is going to be a Jupiter full are like, what, a Cubit? We meant to go to Jamaica. To That's how lost they are. <laughs> I know. I mean, Greenleaves right now are going to continue playing the Bastion comp for as long as, as, as it is currently working, which hasn't stopped working for them, is going to now be swapping themselves onto a Widow as well to try and deal with Anakin in the skies. I mean, look, you've got the slightly more open space out here for Jupiter, so they do have some options available. They can maybe get around the shield a bit better than they could in the more narrow parts of the map, but if Anakin's yeah. dead, you can't get the wraparound spam damage. They can't even just pile on top of 10 because there's so much healing getting pumped into him from these two healers, plus that immortality field. And there's also a res even if he does go down. 10 stays alive and Jupiter have got nothing to go on here. And Greenleaf. Finally, guys, wait for the res. I was gonna say, Greenleaves have so much momentum. And there it is. Even with the snipers coming in that are doing so much work, 50s hitting his shots. He's contesting long range, oh. keeping both Hengi and Amakin locked down. Meanwhile, Ten is just being raised up, he's been kept alive. Scenario is just gonna suicide himself, pretty much. And like we said, if, if the tanks keep throwing themselves onto this cart, the Greenleaves don't even mind that. They've got the immortality field, they've got the res if Ten does go down, and they've got a lot of damage they can pump into the tanks too. It's dangerous for the tanks to go in. This is absolutely nuts. Xerophy kills his counterpart. We haven't seen the uh, the Mercy side very much. So the only hope we have here, if you are oh. Jupiter, and that hope has been extinguished now, is the Rocket Barrage, and that's not just happening. Scenario going down is pretty nice. Also finding 50 alleviates a lot of pressure. 10 is just going to go ahead and try to tank for him, but they probably have done just enough to stop Greenleaf short here, and also with where the cart is, that will probably also mean 10 has to swap off Bastion. But okay. when you've got the cart this far, you've got more out of the Bastion than you would have hoped anyway. So what we do see here is the most dangerous position to be playing a Bastion in, which is to say, once you reach the final part of this point, the spawn doors are very close. There's a lot of high ground and other things surrounding you, so not very safe for the Bastion. Possibly should have set up on the bridge instead, but that's all going to be in hindsight. Green Leaves should be making a decent swap here. They can't really expect to play much more Bastion without the cart control as well. well they so seem to want to. They're no, they're not. They're going to be swapping to Snipers instead, which to deal with the long range section, teams sometimes will opt for Goats, but to be fair, when you look at how open this point is, Snipers should be the dominant comp, and both teams know it. And that's the thing, Green Leaves, they've showed their aptitude on those picks already. It's still Jupiter that have to match here. And I think Hengi should be playing the Widow here too. You really want to be putting the same kind of pressure on the Pharmacy Cobra and Widow on the other side as Tin is currently doing to them. That is a good Biotic Grenade out of Sabbath God, plus the hack allows them to finish off Scenario. And they're getting a lot more pressure here. This is nice for Jupiter as well because it's without ultimates, which they do have far more of than Green Leaves. So this will, if they keep playing like this, burn a lot of Green Leaves' available time. And this is now time that they need to make up for in terms of Jupiter because they lost so much of it on both A and B. Uncontested fights, you would even say. And for Green Leaves now, reassessing the strategy again. They are going to be going for their own Tracer, a Brigida as well, to kind of deal with the Tracer, somber duo of Jupiter moving through. And Green Leaves are in a, in a rough ish kind of spot because they have to swap off the Bastion. They lose their ultimates. This is always going to be a difficult phase for the recharge, made more difficult now by a second comp swap. Jupiter have got the cart into a slightly better position as well. It's like right at this choke point. Green Leaf's gonna have to get a good rack of kills to be able to push it through here. And again, those ultimates are still there for Jupiter. So we now start to get close to just one minute remaining and Jupiter are in a very favorable position. Jupiter need to win a couple of fights here to lay the ultimates. Ooh, maybe a little bit asymmetrically unfortunately. Didn't get much out of that EMP and also didn't get much out of that rocket barrage either. 
Green Leaves are happy to walk away with that. One kill off two ultimates. Two big ultimates, maybe your two biggest ultimates, is well, really bad. Free with Valkyrie. Valkyrie. And that's the thing, and now Greenlee is very happy to walk away, absorbing those. Yes, they have less than one minute, but this is the best kind of last minute setup you could hope for when you didn't really have ultimates to play Ooh. with. Okay, losing Cloud's bad, but... Ten is slept, he's dead here. That's so huge. It's entertaining, at least. Savagon. Green leaves get uh, one reset. Yeah. Savagon has actually kind of rescued it just on the back of that. Xerophy as well. I don't know what happened to Green leaves there. They were obviously setting up for something in got sniffed out or just a bit okay. scattered. So the, the best possible thing happened for Green Leaves, now the worst possible thing happened because outside of the three ultimates, that mistake's been covered up now because Jupiter's made up for all those kills they didn't get by like getting them later. And that actually might be better because this they're is... about to recharge ultimates. The time is even worse and Cloud's down again. I mean, this is this is almost a clockwork comp at this point. I mean, you could argue maybe the May ought to be in there as well, but no, it's, 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 it's actually... Thing. Uh, with, it, between yeah. the Hog... You're right. It's the, close. It's close. The the Hog, Torbjorn, and Orisa are kind of... Uh, it's enough of the bones fit. Well, it's not an Orisa anymore, so... The Hog and the Torbjorn better get a lot done. They've got very few ultimates. Ten's already dead. Sound barrier. You know, previously, these looked like completely different series from map to map in terms of which team looks the lost, but... Now, just in the course of one map, we've had both teams looking equally lost at different times. And unfortunately for Green I mean, Leaves, it happens right on the closing stretch. Which, by the way, I, I will attribute to lack of experience on the map is, is going to be a big factor here. Yeah, especially, we'll show them a bone. Especially when you see, okay, things like you're pushing a Bastion, a uh, pirate ship, into the final section of the map. and Into harbour. You decide to, in a way... This is kind of like harbor. You decide to keep it on the card in possibly the worst position for a Bastion to be in. Possibly playing the Bastion on the bridge would have been a much better option for them. They didn't opt for that one. Also, understandably, once you get to this phase of the map anyway, you're going to be forced to swap. Once that happens, you're going to be in a deficit. The defensive team very likely to win. They're going to have ultimates finally. And the offensive team is going to need a decent amount of time to recharge to a position where they can win again with one push and cap the mat. However, Green Leaves change comps about three times, yeah. two to three times after losing their Bastion Pirate ship. So they never got a large string of ultimates to really play with them. When they finally got the ults out of Jupiter, they then got themselves picked up one by one by yeah. one, which completely undid all their work. So... Just uh, a sad round of affairs for Green Leaves right towards the end there when you consider how good A and B were. Yeah, so look, two things have now fundamentally changed in terms of uh, how these maps have been playing out so far compared to just now on Havana. The first is Green Leaves getting off to an early strong start, didn't end up completely just shutting out Jupiter. The other part of that is the other side of that discussion, which is Jupiter finally managed to stop up Green Leaves when Green Leaves were looking strong. So. Traditionally, yeah. I would have said Greenleaf should just have a strong defense and all but shut Jupiter out, but we have now seen some aptitude from Jupiter. Also, really dangerous to fight around a, a you know. Yeah, do you see some That's teams wild. take the early fight and have success with it? I'm not talking about in, in Overwatch, I just mean in real life, but. In Overwatch at the moment as well, you have Green Leaves where, okay, they've lost a decent amount of members now. This is already very likely them losing control of this entire first section of the map, unless they can get some trades. Oh, no, they're not. Sabagod able to find 50, actually. Nice hack onto Cloud. So, I mean, that's the risk of taking that early fight. As much as we see teams do it, uh, sometimes in Overwatch League, it, it comes with its risks and you see them absolutely backfiring at the Green Leaves. And I think if Jupiter opted for the ground 3-3 mirror, this would have been a better engagement for Green Leaves. It just comes oh. down to who's got the better of the 3-3 mechanics. And because that's not going to be the case, Jupiter have flipped the script here and done the thing that Green Leaves have so often done to Jupiter in the series, which is to play the DPS with the Farah versus the 3-3 Ryan comp, which Green Leaves now kind of have to shake up 50 on the Sombra instead to do something against the DPS as both teams rolling through A without not too much uh, without too much problem. I really want to see 50 actually get back onto the Widowmaker here. I want to see that mirror because we didn't quite see it on Green Leaves' attack, if I'm not mistaken. So far, Hengi has really... Uh, he's really been uh, pulling his share of the load. And really putting pressure onto 50 such that 50 can't get the right rotations and put the right damage in there. Speaking of damage though, Jupiter oh, will go in. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant execution there. West step in to pop the members up. They're able to throw out the Rocket Barrage and they get more than enough out of it before any members of Jupiter end up dying. So Jupiter looking just as good on their attack as Greenleaves did. But B is going to be the most important point in terms of determining does it continue being that way. Jupiter, if they do not snowball through B, Greenleaves would have a vent, would have 
pretty much sufficiently won in this section of the map comparing both attacks and that may affect how Jupiter walk into C because we need to see a lot of time for Jupiter to ensure that they actually get to finish the map. There's a window here where Ken Mahororo has EMP and 50 dozen. Better yet, there's a window here where Jupiter have six members and Green Eve's only a five. And they're just going to go ahead and play to that advantage. Don't even need to use more ultimates. Right? Just need to now. That was a really brutal trade, losing two of those members. That includes the nano boost. Claire has to commit that res in because they really do need the nano boost for the fight. But unfortunately, they lose all priority in the fight. And even this EMP, good as the connection is, is not going to be enough to turn it around with the sound barrier in. So... Green leaves, despite the early losses, the blow they dealt back to Jupiter was way more brutal. And from that point, Jupiter botched everything. And I think this is now potentially the big turning point of this entire map. This may be the fight of Havana that seriously determines who wins and loses in terms of now in this part of the game where we are seeing this Green Leaves defense versus this Jupiter offense because they are not nearly going to get the same amount of time going into C. You just don't have the same kind of confidence in Jupiter actually being able to finish the game. It would be fitting as well for Japan Bowl to end on Havana. I don't know if you know this, but uh, first people to discover Cuba in Europe thought that it might have been Japan just because of the shape of the island from a distance. They were wrong. They were very wrong. Green Leaves, again, another fight win here. They send Jupiter packing and... Well, packing indeed. Maybe going to have to pick another holiday destination. And Jupiter are unlikely to win the next fight either. They don't have ultimates to play with. Seriously, no defensive ones. Sabagods recently swapped back onto a Zen. You're going up against a Grav. There will be a Nano for Sanairo as well to pile in some extra damage and get his Earth Shadow back online. So Jupiter likely going to lose this one. And then if the Snowball continues and EMP is available for 50, yeah. Greenleaves can complete the hold on B. And even then, Jupiter's Goats versus Greenleaf's Sombra Goats has been something they've lost previously in the series anyway. So they'd have to change that tune to begin with green leaves just want to lean into 50s oh, EMP that's a good play. start that's a great Jupiter. start actually there's not much left for green leaves for the course of this fight there's only the nano boost but it's going to be enough for them to deal with west step and suddenly they lose again a lot of their forward pressure that was going to be west steps earth shatter otherwise where's 50 though i think 50 doesn't emp here to set you the fight right on cue gets all the remaining members and that is indeed going to be fight secured so naro able to pick up a good number of kills in that as well allows him to charge up a shatter and you do have the feel for jupiter because they got the first step correct which is deny or at least survive somehow the graviton surge kemba horora eats that one away that's fine but you need to now ensure that you have west step alive because he has your counterplay option you don't have the earth shatter you probably don't win here because you also don't have the grab either so unless jupiter had something to use they were pretty much always guaranteed to lose as long as green leaves had ultimates which they did welcome to the new pacific jupiter this is looking like green leaves might just turn the region on its head a little bit at least in terms of what japanese team is the stronger is a shadow down yeah this is already looking reasonable for green leaves jupiter not really getting much out of their ultimates finally finding cloud though this is where the grab from Hengi can be big. If they can get these kills, they do find Sonairo and Jupiter. They're not going to let it go that easily. They're going to be able to finally start moving the card again. They may be lean on time, but they only need to finish the map. If they can accomplish that, they still win. And 10 and zero feet just slightly too slow on the trigger pull. In fact, they did not even pull, and that's a bit of an issue here. You don't see the counter grab. You don't see the sound barrier counter as well. 50 has an EMP now, so what we can bank on is Green Leaves have the much better retail here in terms of how we're going to be playing it with the ultimates mm. pause is going to come in with jupiter losing a member e that's going to hurt them at least that's in some ouch. ways and jupiter needed every bit of help they could get look they get past the first hurdle of the point which is we're going to get through a bit of the the few snaking um turns of twists of that second point but then you get to the end and you have a defense that can still contest you and okay we say they didn't use the sound barrier, they didn't use the Graviton Surge, but they did absorb a bunch of ultimates here. They didn't, they didn't risk anything on that initial, uh, on, on that when that uh, Jupiter eventually gets. What they can now do is, there's not a lot of time left, mm. throw all your ultimates, including EMP, in the final section of B, you'll probably win. Even if you don't win B, you throw it onto C, you might yeah, win as well. You've got that sort of time, right? And, and I mean, even just... If you look at it through the lens of straight up playing for the clock here for Green Leaves, we can assume that pretty much any fight they use in EMP is on balance, one they'll win yep. based on how the series has gone so far. So, Pause has been resolved, the Amican has been able to reconnect, so should be able to get back underway here. Actually coming back on Batiste as well, and I think they're sort of realizing the dieness of this situation. 
perhaps a good immortality field could save them here. It would be a long shot, but it's a shot they have to take. Oh, speaking of yeah. shots taken, that's 50 down. That removes the EMP. That was probably Green Leaves' biggest tool for this next fight. So suddenly, you put it go. Yeah, really on the front foot. They've spun the opportunity. They're just going to pile on in. Nice angle on the self-destruct. Doesn't get any kills, but it forces positioning. Grabs a little bit ambitious there from 10. Jupiter backing up some trades so far, 50. but Jupiter getting off the better of them. 50 finally throws the EMP in, but he's low in his own right. Does finish off Sabagod, who unfortunately didn't receive the sound barrier benefit, but Jupiter have got the upper hand in the fight, needing to finish off Sonaro here at the last leg. Winnable. And they will be able to get this one over the line, extend that clock to extend their chance just a little bit. And when you look at how many ultimates Green Leaves actually had versus what Jupiter had to work with, that should have been a one and done for Green Leaves. Hold on to B. They have the map, they have the three and one, but now they deliver the possibility of Jupiter actually pushing this through, taking us to a map five because Green Leaves used everything there. And Sabagod, the miracle worker that he is, enables it all for Jupiter. Now look, they can still play for time here, Green Leaves. There's only a minute to go, Jupiter, even if they win this next one. If by the fight after that, Green Leaves have an EMP charged up, they should be able to win that one and that would be the last fight. But they're already in good standing for this fight with the pick on Amic and Jupiter having to back right off. And there's possibly only a couple of resets that Jupiter can afford. This one is going to be one of those and possibly the only one. Looking at the length of this map and how far they actually still have to go, they can't really lose anymore because the time just does not allow for it. This is where Baptiste could be very impactful or a huge deficit. They throw out the amplification matrix. Oh. Earth Shatter is just kind of out in the middle of nowhere, unfortunately. And that means there's two ultimates that Jupiter haven't got anything out of. And now Green Leaves, they have ultimates at their disposal. Jupiter have no answers. Oh, Shatter's okay. down. And it's a good one, too. The immortality field will not allow them to survive. Cloud is able to dispatch him far too fast. One trade back from Ken Mahororo. This is the last reset they can afford, but don't even know if they can really afford it. They're actually just sticking in the fight. 10 low, but staying alive is so huge. Struggling to stay in this one is Jupiter. Looking EMP. to reach the car, but the EMP is going to stop them from regrouping for now. And the sound barrier for Green Leaves gives them far more mileage and far more health. And they've still got a transcendence if they really needed one. Green Leaves are the winners of Japan Bowl. They have usurped the yep. previous front runner. And it was a hope in hell, unfortunately, for the side of Jupiter, just trying right towards the end there. We talk about miracles and Sabagod set this up for Jupiter to give them a shot at sea. It was going to be a long shot. It was always going to be super difficult based on how B went and said that was going to be the pivotal point, the pivotal fight. If they lose momentum here, they do not have time to finish the map anymore. And unfortunately, Green Leaves, as we both mentioned as well, playing for the clock and playing for that win condition stops Jupiter from being able to finish. This is such a massive shakeup as well to season two for this year at the start of the season you and i were talking about this we went talon and nova and then quite possibly jupiter look week one already kind of threw a spanner in that works when okay maybe not jupiter in third place but probably still somewhere in the middle they should still be able to fix things up and look they may fix things up yet and on the other side of that you look at the trials yeah. teams you go if green leaves can beat a team above them if they can beat a team within that middle of the pack not only does it help secure them in the season to not just end up back in relegations, it also opens the door potentially for Far East Society, who also play just after this. This alone just kind of blows everything wide open. I think it gives you confidence if you are a trials team. I mean, definitely Far East Society still have to do their own work here. Obviously, I yeah. mean, Green Leaves aren't going to hand over the homework for free, but you do have a case where... Like you sort of mentioned, we the preseason you place Jupiter based on previous seasonal strength, possibly in top three, possibly around number three after week one lost to Xavier, which was very unfortunate for them, very one sided. Internally, at least for me, I popped them maybe like around fifth five, or six, six yeah. right? But still not in relegation, still not really in relegation territory. Now that Green leaves and part of their story is who do they take down to reach that top six, move someone else into trials? such that they now maintain a, a playoff position mm -hmm. while Jupiter is the first victim of that and Green Leaves can keep going. Or even if they, even if this is the only top six team they beat, this might be just enough for yeah. them to land and play on. And what a fitting team for them to beat as well because, you know, even if it does pan out that Green Leaves stay in contenders and Jupiter end up in relegations, it, then this match ends up being that, that focal point, yeah. the changing of the guard. 
And we've talked about this already, but another match coming up, Far East Society, going to be playing their second match of contenders ever up against Global Esports, a mainstay of the region, but that all happens right after this. We'll see you soon.